mechanization of the harvest has been a big challenge. Been over a dozen machines built by ag engineers at the university, tested. Commercial entities have built four or five. Been probably a dozen farmer innovations over the last 30 to 40 years. Started out with machines that attempted to spear the plant onto a wooden stick. That just wasn't successfully done in the 60s. Efforts then turned towards harvesting aids. Small self-propelled machine you could ride on, take the plant as it was cut, hand spear it onto the stick, set the stick aside on the ground, and continue harvest. Those flourished for five or six years. Finally, somebody thought about notching plants and hanging it on wire. The wire hanging technique was found to be favorable because it simplified harvest machines, but it added labor hanging the plants on a wire frame. So what you gained in harvest, you lost hanging. But nevertheless, two or three machines were built that seemed to be quite favorable in operation. The idea is to put plants on a wooden stick so it will fit in with all the farmers who now use stick technology, conventional harvesting, and barn methods. The machine is designed to harvest between four and eight acres a day. The plants are cut very near the bottom of the stalk and conveyed up an incline as you see here. As it goes through there, notches are cut near the bottom of the stalk on either side and the stalk is then advanced rearward and into a portable frame. This concept of notching the tobacco stalk is also being successfully tested in another harvester, also developed in the UK Department of Agricultural Engineering. The harvester cuts, notches, and conveys planks to workers on a trailing wagon who then hang those planks onto a wire-strung portable frame. When the frame is filled, the frames are handled by a tractor front-end loader system. Work on the two harvesters began three years ago. Testing has gone well, but it will still be a while before the harvesters can be produced commercially. One of the machines built by our ag engineering team was commercialized by Powell Manufacturing. And it used a wooden frame with wires stretched across the front that was carried on the machine so that the workers could take plants after they were notched and hang on the wooden frame. That frame was forklift by the tractor from the machine, lined up at the edge of the field, and tobacco was cured under plastic cover in the field. And all of that cut about half of the harvest and housing labor out. A dozen or so of those machines were built, tried, farmers were delighted with it for a while, but then it got to be a little more of a burden to keep five or six people as a team to operate the machine, keep everything going. So that soon began to fade out. The fact that it takes the uh, strenuous labor out of harvesting. The workers on this machine are handling uh, one stalk as the largest unit that they're handling at any one time. And once the stalk is hung on the wire, the tobacco is then handled mechanically from there on through until stripping time. Another team of ag engineers started working on a very sophisticated automated harvester that notched the plant and slid the plant into a circular tube, sort of like a barn door track. The plant was notched on each side near the base and automatically slid into those 12 foot long tubes and an eight by 12 foot frame would hold 450 plants. And that machine took about six years to build, perfect, and was very costly, several hundred thousand dollars for a new machine, even though it cut half of the labor or 80% of the labor, labor from harvest and housing. 
So that work progressed to the point of finally Philip Morris built three of them to loan out to farmers to really see if it was going to be feasible. Worked quite nicely, did the job, but again, the investment in the metal frames was very expensive, much more so than barns. So the high cost of that mechanical innovation limited its acceptance in Burley Kingdom about the time the small harvesting aids began to flourish. Migrant labor became more prevalent, and that took away some of the efforts at the harvesting aids. So then the more automated equipment had to compete with migrant labor, and migrant labor has won out, even though it's getting costly. A lot of regulations, so on, but at least that's what's getting the crop done now. Right now, stalk spearing is pretty much phased out. Not any equipment available that's being operated. So mechanization has gone through several ups and downs. Many machines tried, but nothing has replaced the Tommy Hawkins spear on a very large scale.